Good morning and happy Monday. So today I am excited to share with you some new images that I have to um, develop into a painting. I also want to welcome anybody who's new to painting with ArtRave. Um, my name is Michelle and I am going to be your artist today. Um, this morning is just a time to kind of get together and relax and enjoy the beginning of a brand new week. Whatever you had going on over the weekend, you can put it behind you or just take that relaxed feeling with you into this morning and into the rest of the week. Um, if you're just enjoying your tea or your coffee this morning with me, then thank you very much and welcome. And just enjoy this next hour. We're going to go through the process of looking at some inspiring images, one. Then we're going to do a quick sketch just to sort of plan out our painting. And, and then I'm going to do the complete little painting process all on a little tiny mini canvas. So these are our morning minis. They're four by four. Um, I will try to put the link to these canvases in the, um, the details later. But this is, these come as a little set with an easel. So these are wonderful to put up around your house, give as a gift. Um, they brighten little corners of your house. Like I have little minis kind of sprinkled around my house and they're just adorable. Every time I paint something new, I switch one out. And it's just, um, it's a great little way to display a painting, um, not commit maybe to a larger canvas, but also to just add some little bright art to your home. Okay, so I'm gonna put that link um, later on in the comments. Good morning, Donna and Marge. And, um, and for those of you that are new and watching me on the main page, um, this is also something that we do regularly in our ArtRave membership. So I have a Michelle's Inner Circle it's a monthly membership where if you want to get the most from ArtRave um, for the best deal, it is our monthly membership is um, it's closed at the moment, but you can always join our waiting list. And we do little paintings like this every Monday and a whole lot more. There's a lot more learning and freebies and evening paintings that we do on a larger scale and all of it is included in the membership. Okay. So let's get started. I'm gonna show you first on my iPad, um, the subject that we're doing today. Um, good morning, Bonnie. And this morning I am drinking a green tea latte that is so yummy. So I'm gonna to try to enjoy it while it's hot. So if you hear me sipping, it's because I don't wanna let this yummy latte get cold. Hi, Barbara, hi, Bonnie. Okay, so let me switch this to my tabletop here. And I want to show you some first some inspirational images. So a lot of times with our morning minis, we shop around and we think about and talk about what we're going to paint um, really quickly. But I actually had, let me go to my um, inspirational references. So first of all, on, on your iPad or iPhone, or any of your devices, if you have a shared album or an album that you can create, um, that I name mine inspirational references, and I just throw images in here whenever I take pictures of something that I might want to later use for a painting reference. And it's very important to have references as an artist. And when you take your own photographs, it's even better because then you have, even if you're going to use other images to support yours, if you are basing it mostly off of your own photograph, then you're sure to have a more, the most original painting. Okay, so they didn't all come through here that I just sent, but this, my sister-in-law went to a butterfly farm or a butterfly grower. And so I'll just share with you this quick video and let me turn the volume lower because they're just laughing. It's so cute though. So this is my daughter, Giselle, and she's in the back room of somebody who is part of a monarch project. And they're raising monarchs. I guess that there's numbers, their numbers are being threatened. And they're raising them and releasing them. And you can go to her back porch and you can watch them emerge uh, from their chrysalis. You can see all the caterpillars that she has in different tanks. And then you can also take some of these butterflies and go out into her garden and help release them. So isn't that cool? I think that's the woman's whose house that they're at. Um, 
And then um, this is a picture that I had to share because I think it is just adorable. These two butterflies were on her hand and look at the butterflies are holding hands. Look at this. I mean, you just can't, is that not the cutest thing ever? So I just thought, I had to share that. I thought that was so cute. It's almost hard to believe it's real. If you did, if you painted this, it, you wouldn't think it was real because it just looks, the photograph just is so hilarious to me. So there's my sister-in-law with a monarch on her face and I love the, this is a great, um, you know, image because it's a good angle of the butterfly with the wings fully open. And for some reason, those are the only pictures that transferred over when I um, shared them from my, my phone. So, but that should be enough. Oh, did I even not play this? Hold on. Oh yeah, I did, I was talking. Um, so this is my inspiration day. We're gonna paint a monarch and we can use any type of flower reference that we want. I wouldn't dare paint a hand. That would just be way too challenging for um, most people like we have with them, you know, where they are. So you take a reference or an inspiration and then you can move it into an area that, or into a painting that you can achieve or that you'd be happy with. So these were some photographs that I took when I was um, on vacation in, um, in New York. Uh, we were up near Lake George. And so there was this beautiful garden with the most enormous cone flowers I've ever seen. And just some beautiful um, flowers in general. And I thought since last Monday within the inner circle, we did some little quickie sketches on watercolor. I thought it would be fun um, for inner circle members also to now paint a, a cone flower without using watercolor and see how different we approach it when you do the same subject in a different, um, in a different medium. So I thought we would take, we could take the cone flower and do a butterfly um, and see the difference in how we, we approach the different mediums. And I'm kind of excited to paint a cone flower in acrylic because it's such a different approach. And I really wanted to share with you, um, you know, that different approach. Okay, so let's do a cone flower and a monarch butterfly. So we're gonna have an orange, black and pink color scheme. So it's always good to kind of think about and identify the colors that you want to have in your painting. And I know that I want to have a dark background and a very light um, flower. So I'll, that I already have that planned in my head. Um, and then of course the monarch, I want the monarch to be a good part of it. And it's a tiny canvas. So we're going to have to plan accordingly. All right. So let me put this aside. And let me get out my sketch pad and we're gonna do a quick sketch and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna pull all these ideas and elements together because that's what you usually do. If you're gonna be painting on your own and painting your own paintings, um, you need to decide how you're going to, how you're gonna organize and plan this painting. So let's get out a piece of paper. And this is just a giant sketch pad um, you know, the larger sketch pads, like 100 or 120 sheets, seems like you'd never fill it. But when you use it for, you use it for quick sketches, which is planning, scribbling, um, not finished, there's no finished drawings in here. Well, that one's sort of finished, but that was still a practice. Um, then it fills up pretty quickly. So it's great to have a practice sketch pad where it, this is not for drawing, Big fancy pictures it's for doing quick sketches that are going to help us get to our, our painting all right so let's do a let's try two different compositions now if you're new to making compositions you might have a lot of these sketches now these are when I was in art school these were called thumbnails and some some classes we were required to do, you know, several pages of thumbnails um, to develop a concept and to get it down. So it's up to you how many you want to do, but don't hold yourself back. Just keep on s sketching until you get that sketch that is what you, what is communicating your vision of 
your subject. Okay, so if I start with the butterfly, I, the composition of the butterfly, I kind of want my butterfly to be kind of like this. Off-centered is always a good idea. So I'm going to draw just that rough sketch of my butterfly somewhere in this off-centered spot. Now I can go smaller on the coneflower. So if the butterfly is here, let me go back to her reference. Let me see how much it has of a head on here. Okay, yeah, so it's going to have a pretty, pretty noticeable little head and body here. And we're not gonna see the legs on the flower, but we might want, I just wanna get the placement of the flower. So I can have the cone flower here. Notice I'm going off of the square also. Let me see if I can change the lighting just a, just a smidge. So it's nice and bright, okay. So notice how I'm taking the, the, cone, the cone flower and I'm going off of the page this is going to help me to make sure that I have the lines correct. Even though I'm cropping it right here, I'm going off of the, the square. This is why it's also so helpful to sketch it on paper first because you want your canvas to show a, a true, the true angles or lines of the, the petals without being influenced by the, the edge of the canvas, which does happen. Okay, so then, or, now if I, if I do this composition, which I do like, it gives me rooms for my antennas, okay? And I could do a dark background, or I could do a little lighter background, like I want, if I wanna have those hills in the background and have this close with the cone flower. That would be kinda neat, because then I could have the sky in the background, which would be nice, because the, the dark antenna would show up nicely against a light sky. So I'm also thinking right now about the contrast between the darks and the lights, which is, that's a little bit more advanced. Um, when you start painting more, you will start paying attention to, to contrast, even in your sketches. So if I do this butterfly, I like it, and I could put the cone flower up higher, because this is, if I don't put a hill in here, this is kind of empty space. So I could fill the space with a big cone flower this way, and then have it coming down like this, although I think that this cone flower is too big for this butterfly, because if, if you think about the size of the butterfly, it's probably, um, monarchs are pretty large, so this would have to be a larger wing, like this, which I, I could do that too. I could go large and large, or I could shrink everything down. See, I personally like, it's maybe it's part of my my, my style, if you want to say that, is I like going really large and then cropping things, things going off of the, the canvas like this. It just, it always seems to have a certain amount of interest to it to me. But I like this, I like this idea of having this little sky in these hills because um, even though I, I'm capturing this memory of the monarch that I had, that my daughter had, I'm also placing them in our, not Wisconsin, our um, New York vacation. So I think by painting this little hill back here, it's gonna remind me of Lake George. And I really like that idea of combining um, that memory of Lake George. So I'm gonna go with this composition. All right, so now that I've got that, um, we can start on our painting. So I'm gonna be using the, this is, I'll show you the references that I'm pulling together. I'm gonna to use this picture here of the monarch, okay, on Mary's face. I'm also gonna use one of these, probably this one, just this kind of hill in the background and that just that very light little pale background back there. And then for my flower, I'll probably use, let me see my sketch. Which angle do I want? Whoops, hold on. So for this picture here, I could use like maybe this one here. I could use this 
and then just try, I'm just gonna turn it and kind of move it down a little bit. So I'll use this one as my, although these, these look a little ratty, but you know what, that's okay. Um, I can always change the petals out. Like this one looks a little sparse. See how there's missing, so we're missing some petals, but still a great reference for color and shape. That one's nice too. All right, so, but I'm gonna be using one of these close-ups or the, the close-ups in general as my my reference for the flower. That one's very pretty too. Um, so we have plenty of reference for the cone flower. All right, so let me scooch that back here. All right, so now we have to decide, are we going to do a underpainting on this or are we just gonna leave it um, white? Now, most of the paintings that I do, I paint an underpainting on because I like to darken the background. And I teach a lot in Art Rave um, about creating contrast and having a, having a darker background makes for a more dramatic building up of the lights. So with acrylic, I like to teach going from dark to light, um, especially with these paints that we use, which are the Blick acrylic. If you use a, um, well, really with any kind of paint, any brand of paint, I still like going dark to light because I love painting on lighter and lighter highlights and then bringing out all those beautiful highlights. Uh, so let's go with painting the, the canvas brown first, which seems a little strange because we're going to be adding all these beautiful bright colors, but this is what's going to give our our painting some, some depth. And you can do all different types of underpaintings. You can do black underpaintings. You can do a color. Each different color of paint is gonna change your painting a little bit, but even that can be a fun experiment with um, underpainting. So it doesn't have to be smooth, but I'm smoothing out the top since I'm gonna be painting the, the sky and the mountains over here. And then I'm gonna have my butterfly here. See, I could, I could even start my sketch right now. There's the body. And maybe I'll move them a little higher. I'm gonna move them up here. And his, his wings are angling down because that's how the that's how the reference is. So this is a different approach. It's just using your underpainting to start your sketch. I'm gonna have my cone flower circle right here. And then I'm gonna have some petals kind of coming off of there. And then, like I said, I have my little mountains back there. All right, so I've kind of already practiced my sketch again on the actual canvas, and that is, um, it's a great way to use your underpainting. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly blow dry this so we can get to the layers of paint. Let's get our colors out now. Okay, so if I think about the colors that I want, I'm definitely gonna need um, some blue and green. So my go-to my go-to greens. Now with Art Rave, I've always painted for the, you know, nine years I've been doing classes and teaching Art Rave, I've always been using the same 12 colors and it just, it helps if you're just starting out to limit your palette and use the same colors for a while that you can mix and get to learn and know. So I use green oxide is my go-to green. It's a 
nice middle of the road green. And I also use cobalt blue. And then I'm gonna need white. Good morning, Jody. Good morning, Barbara. I think we, every once in a while, I like to kind of check on my camera and see who's popping in this morning. Okay, so there's a little bit of white. I'm gonna need a brighter pink than my usual palette because I used two different reds in Art Rave, but this particular flower has some kind of vivid pinks. It's a little harder to achieve the reds that I, I use. So I'm gonna use this medium magenta in a Liquitex Basic. So let's just use that. And I'm gonna need a little bit of bright red, so I need to deepen this up a little bit. So I use a little bit of bright red. And for the butterfly, we're gonna need orange. So I'm gonna get some, this is chrome orange and chrome yellow. So all of these paints I buy from Blick and I put them in my own cute little bottles, but I buy them since I buy them, you know, by the jug. But um, the Blick colors are a fluid acrylic, so they're a little bit thinner and they will puddle. And then the Liquitex Basics, they come from a tube, so they're a little thicker. But Liquitex Basics, what I love about them is um, the quality is just about the same, maybe a tiny bit better, but there's a, just a variety. You can. What's nice about the Liquitex Basics is you can get a, a set, a whole set of little small tubes for a really great price so that you can actually try out different colors. So it's really nice to try out like, you know, having a, an aqua green, you don't need to buy a big container of aqua green, um, like in the Liquitex, I mean, in the, um, like in the Blick colors, because you might not use it that often. So if you're going to have a color you're going to use a lot, maybe you get a little larger container, but then it's nice to have the Liquitex basics because you can completely, you know, have a whole range of different colors to experiment with once in a while. Oh, funny. I was just reading some comments from Shannon. Okay, so this is nice and dry. And if I didn't have my um, my underpainting, I already kind of sketched it out a little bit, but let me just put it back in here with some chalk. So I usually like to kind of give a little extra, maybe I'll move my cone flower down a little bit because I have my mountains over here. Let me go, I want, to, I want my mountains to actually be just like the Lake George, so I'm gonna try and copy it exactly. This is my, my photo that I had, so I'm gonna just really use it. Okay, and then we've got some clouds and whatever. So that's my, and then my butterfly is gonna come a little bit higher maybe. Okay, so we've got three little sections here. We've got a distant background. We have our cone flower kind of taking up this area, and then we've got our butterfly that's gonna fill out this area. Now for the butterfly, since I'm, I wanna make sure I know where the butterfly is gonna end, so I need to get my butterfly reference back up. And when you're doing a sketch of a butterfly, it might be easier for you too if you take some time to sketch out a bunch of butterflies. For the sake of time, I am gonna jump right in and draw it right on my canvas. But I, um, I would suggest you taking a little time for yourself. If you are, if you don't sketch all the time, you really want your painting to be your best, then take some time to practice. So the wings are kind of partially down; they're not fully open, which is why they're angled down. So the the top section of the wing is overlapping the bottom section. But I really just want to get the end in here, the bottom of the wing, so I know where to bring the little pinks when I do the flower. 
All right, next we're gonna do the background. We're gonna go from the background and move forward. So I'm gonna start off with the background. And the brush I'm using today is one of my Art Rave sets. And these are my favorite go-to sizes, um, large, medium, and small. But we don't use the large for this tiny painting. This is a number six round. And then this is a number 10 bright. So I'm gonna start off with the sky and I'm just gonna do a nice little white. I'm gonna do a wet on wet treatment for the sky, which is painting a wet background. So I'm painting some white. I'm gonna paint right up to where my hills are. And then while it's wet, I'm gonna add a little bit of blue and a tiny bit of green, just a little bit of green. And it, it will blend into that white and start making a beautiful sky color. So I like it to have a little bit more blue near the top of the sky and then get softer as it goes down. So I lighten it by just letting the blue paint wear off. You know what, I forgot to put on my microphone again. Okay, so I just put my microphone on. Sorry for the change in the sound. I forget this microphone all the time. All right, so now I'm just lightly softening it by just barely touching the canvas with my brush, just lightly, just softening that. Now I can still see some of the brown through there, which is okay. I, when this dries, I might add a second layer. All right, so let me bring up now my, I need to go back to my sky. Where are you in my hills? Okay. So whenever you have something disappearing deep into the background, now we know these hills have green trees, but because they're so far in the distance, that green is actually going to be blue green. Because when something goes into the distance, it usually gets a bluish cast or even a purple. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of red to this too. So I want it to be sort of a muted, soft, bluish green. Let's see here. So I'm adding a little bit of red. It's red, blue, and green. Now the it seems like it's gonna make a muddy color because red and green are actually complements and when you add complements, it will, it makes a muddy color. I'm doing that on purpose because I want that little bit of red and green to muddy down this color. I want it to be a little bit muted. I don't want it to be a bright purple or a bright blue. I want it to be a dull, a dull blue. So I'm aware that the green and the red are gonna add some dullness to this. So there's my little dull purpley color. Okay, so those are the hills. Now this is um, fairly light, but the, the, the brown behind it is gonna help it to dry a little darker. So I'm, gonna, I'm hoping on that. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of some deeper Maybe I'll get a little. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more color. Just to add a little bit of a little bit more depth to it. Just a little bit darker. Now, I'm gonna bring it down a little further than I need to. I'm getting a little bit more green in here. I'm gonna bring a little bit further down than I need to so I can overlap it with my grasses. And I do wanna add some grasses because I wanted to make it look like we are in this meadow. Like I showed you earlier, that beautiful photo that I took at Lake George, the hills in the background. 
So there's some, there's some dark green trees and then there's some grasses and it's very, very small amount, but that's what's, you know, every little detail that you can, if you can bring more detail into your paintings or more layers, then it's, it's fun. You can also keep things super simple. You know, you could make this painting with just, um, let me get a little paper towel to dry my brush. You can make it very, very simple with just a black and green background kind of like this. And just have a very mottled black and green background and then your flower will really st stand out. You know, I'm getting a little bit um, more in depth with choosing to do a sky and mountains on this little tiny one inch strip, but I'm still keeping it simple. It's just a little sky. And I'm gonna come back and add a little more white now that it's dry and I can add it slowly and make them look kind of like clouds or I could just blend it all in too so I'm going to just come right up to my mountains now if you don't want to paint over your your sky you could add, either add more blue here and then just you know basically paint it again or you can wipe all the excess paint off your brush and now with a dry a clean brush it's, it's still damp I'm just tapping and blending softening out those edges So now I brightened up the sky, but I didn't even add any blue the second time. I just used a damp brush to kind of lighten that white near the top. If you do paint too much white in there, just take a touch of blue-green and just add some more blue in there. I mean, it's super easy just to, to paint it again. All right, so now I'm going to add some quick little pine trees so that I have something dark here. And I'm going to need some black. and get some green and black and maybe a little bit of blue. So I want to get a really, really dark green and I'm going to make these little tiny pine trees back here. Because basically I need a good contrast to my the little grasses I'm going to make. have yep I'm going to show you my picture that I'm looking at so this is the these are the hills and there are some of the, those deep pine trees and I'm just adding a suggestion of those in here so that I can contrast my next layer of grasses so I want to get these pretty nice and deep green so I'm going to get a little bit of black in there and just put in some little little mini tree line. Notice I'm not going all the way across and doing it like a whole row. I'm just going to get, it looks a little more natural I think if you have it broken up like that. Alright, so there's some little dark trees in the distance. Alright, it's looking pretty darn cute so far. And the that's just black and green and just a tiny bit of blue. Alright, now I do need that to dry a little bit before I add the grasses. So while it's drying, I'm gonna just put in my my flower petals and I'm gonna start base coating in um, my my coneflower. So let's go to the coneflower images again. There we go. All right. So we're so for the base of the coneflower, it's actually black. It's pretty dark. So I'm going to base my coneflower. I'm going to move it down a little bit. 
So you can always make, a dif make another decision. Even if you draw it on there with chalk, you can still change it to your liking during the painting process. I'm going to move my cone flower down a little bit. I'm imagining it going all the way here. Okay, and then I'm going to fill in the pinks. Keeping in mind that overall shape that I saw, and I, if you practice it in a drawing, or if you did these last week with me, um, if you were in the inner circle and you did any of these little sketches, then you already sort of had some practice with this flower, and that's going to help you coming into this little exercise. So I'm just going to start off with a light pink. It doesn't really matter if it's pink or white. I want to just get a nice, bright... nice bright color in here. Now there's going to be a lot of overlapping flowers. I don't, we don't need to paint it this. A lot of overlapping petals. But I want to make sure I pretend, I, I imagine it going off the page just like in my sketch. So when I did the sketch and I drew those petals going off the page. I need to remember that as I'm painting and go off the canvas with my brush and make sure I think about that petal coming all the way out to here. And then it's going to come down to here. If I imagine it maybe there. Okay, and actually, it might actually only come to here, so I might paint that out. All right, so I've got the base coat. So remember, we go from dark. I said going from dark to light. Now, in in this case with the flower, we started off with the um, since we have that dark background. I'm going to. I'm not going that dark. This this is kind of like a middle of the road. So. There's, there's really two ways to approach layering in, in acrylic. Um, dark to light is the easiest thing to remember, but sometimes if we're doing a lighter subject, it's also, I also go base coat, highlights, and shadows. So if you think of things in, in a three-step process, it just helps your brain to just simplify something. So if I'm painting something that's really dark, like trees or like this flower, I'm gonna start dark first, then medium, and then light. And that's going to be an easy way you'll see this, this um, cone flower come about. Now with the flower petals, I'm going base coat, highlights, and shadows. So the base coat is the middle of the range color. And then since it's fairly bright, these pink petals, I'm going to paint in a little bit of the deeper pinks for the shadows, and then a little bit of white for the highlights. So I chose to do the base coat first, which is that middle. So if you think dark, medium, light, I painted the medium color first, and then I'll paint the darker pinks and the brighter whites. So it's just, um, those are little decisions that you'll figure out um, if you're gonna start with the base coat and do sh shadows and highlights, or if you're gonna go with the, sh the darkest color first. But you're, you'll still, be way ahead of the game if you think in terms of like dark, medium, light. Okay, so I'm going to base coat in my my um, butterfly really quickly. And for this butterfly, since black covers everything, I'm going to just paint in the beautiful orange transition here. So I want to get a beautiful deep orange to yellow. So I'm going to start off with orange and yellow and a little bit of white to get it a li little more opaque. And I'm going to paint in this. This is going to be base coat highlights shadows. So I'm going to put in the base coat is going to be orange. So let's just get the whole. And I'm not going to go all the way out to the edges because the edges get black. 
but I can get all the orange base coat in, staying away from the edges. I'm gonna, the edges are all black, which is wonderful about butterflies. You can just paint it in and then the edges become black. So just base coat in those beautiful oranges. We're gonna make the most beautiful orange transition all at one time, at one piece. We don't, see, we don't paint the butterfly in pieces. We paint it in layers. So we layer in these oranges, and this is gonna to have to dry, and I'm gonna to have to do a second coat, but we layer in the oranges, and then all we need to do is just paint the black details over the top, the black and white. So they're super fun and satisfying because if you think of it in those two layers. Okay, so now that that's on there, we need to let that dry. I need to decide what I'm gonna do with this bottom corner. I know this area here, I'm gonna paint in some distant grasses. So for the remaining area behind the butterfly, it's just gonna be a very dark green. So I'm gonna actually come in with some black and blue and green. I'm going to paint this petal out. I don't want that there anymore. And I'm just going to put in this, some suggestions of greenery back there. Just I'm just plopped in some little green. And um, I might define some of the petals with some dark behind it as well, but I'm going I'm to paint the petals first. Okay, so we're going to hop around a little bit here because what, I, what you want to do is there's times when you want to paint wet on wet, and then there's times when you need to let a layer dry and then come back on top of it. So I let this dry, and this is dry. So now I'm going to come in, I'm going to paint the... Now that the flower has dried, I'm going to put in the highlights and some highlights and shadows. So let's get some beautiful reference here. And I'm gonna take, um, I'm using this still, this number six. I'm gonna use the magenta and a little bit of red to deepen it up. And just a tiny bit of blue, just to get it a little bit deeper. And now I'm gonna do these little points that are coming from the center of the flower. Now while it's still wet, I can take a little bit of the medium magenta, a little bit of magenta and white, and sort of blend it. And it's too dark still. I'm gonna get a little bit more white. So I'm gonna take some white and I'm pulling towards the, the shadowy areas, just sort of blending it and seeing what happens. I wanna get a little bit of a dark to light. I want it to be darker near the base of the flower and lighter in the middle, so I'm pulling some lighter pinks towards the middle. Just trying to build up some really pretty pinks. Now underneath the, the butterfly wing, these petals might get a little shadow, so I'm gonna put a little dark pink underneath there. so pretty when you start adding the color. The, these, these beginning phases that you saw, the, the planning stage, you know, the layering, all that stuff, I mean that doesn't, it's not the super exciting part. It makes it, it makes a big difference in your painting if you plan and you sketch and you do all those planning stages. But of course the fun part is that, that when you actually are applying the color and you're getting the, now this, from this point forward, the painting is going to really start to come together. We've obviously done all of our underpaintings. We've done our basic layers. It's not pretty right now. That's how paintings evolve. They don't look pretty the first half, 
because you're building those foundation layers. But then as you get towards the final half or like that final quarter of the painting, that's when it just starts to just come alive at the very end. So if you've watched this far, then you're going to see all the exciting stuff happening in the next you know, few minutes. Um, and then we're going to finish this up with all the little black and white details and that butterfly is just going to just going to pop. But the butterfly has to be done last because he's on he's on top. Okay, so on my cone flower, I have to get some of these petals a little bit more layered, meaning there's some in the back and then there's some in the front. So I'm going to try and get some dark petals behind. I'm going to get some nice dark red and a little blue and paint some petals that are in the background. So I'm going to use this little this is these are the petals that are behind the petals. So I'm going to get some darker blue purple. And I think I'm going to get a smaller brush. So on a tiny when you, if you paint on 4x4s regularly, you're definitely going to want to invest in a tiny brush. And this one is a number zero. So one, two, or zero are going to be helpful on tiny canvases. So I'm getting some blue mixed in with my red and magenta. And I'm going to paint into these little, these little spaces. Just to wherever I might decide to put a flower, kind of, I mean a petal like in the background. Okay, so those are some background petals. It's going to give some nice highlight to the, my the petals that are in front. And just for the sake of balance, I'm going to take some of this black green and I'm going to just put a little bit of the black green in here. So I imagine these petals just ending off there. Okay, so now all of the petals have some type of background to them. They're going to either have a the garden, which is black green, or they might have some distant petals. And there's not a lot of, you know, strict planning in here. It's just from drawing these petals several times, I have become a little more familiar with how the gaps show and how the petals layer. So that has come from doing a lot of other previous sketches. Like I did these sketches last week and and so I, my memory from those paintings is coming back to me and just helping me to make this a little more simplified and and just spontaneous. So I'm, now I'm going to take some highlights. I'm going to highlight some of the edges of my petals with some thin white and pink, like really, really light pink. And this is where the little details come in that look really pretty on this flower. So let's get some nice white details, or light pink, I should say. I'm taking straight white and I want to just add some little lines to my petals. So I like giving you in these little lessons, I like giving you a lot to think about. I can't help but like, you know, giving you some little things to learn, but I also want you to keep it simple. If you're just beginning, do your best and see what comes out. Let, let yourself be surprised. And don't, um, don't worry if you don't get every single detail or layer. You're going to learn something and you're going to learn something every time you attempt a new painting. Um, but do it as 
you know, if you need to simplify it a little bit and be okay with that, then do that. Because everybody's at a different stage and everybody's going to see things one time and they're not going to be able to, and they're not going to see it the first time, but maybe you'll see something that you can do the second or third time you paint something in a flower. And each time you get a little bit better and each time you get a little more confident. So, okay, so there's my, my flower and I need to do the center now. So for the center, I started dark and now I'm going to layer um, these beautiful little spikes all over here. Now I have to decide, like, how can I simplify these so that I don't, you know, have to paint every single little spike on here. And when I look at the center of the flower on my image, which I'm going to show you really quickly. So here's my, my little flower. You can see all those little spikes in the orange. I have to think, okay, how can I make this a little bit more simplified and create a technique that is achievable? Well, I can see from the flower that it's very orangey and yellow up near the top where the spikes are, where they're overlapping and very concentrated. So I'm going to start off with a beautiful orange and yellow along the top here. Which of course doesn't look so great against black, but we'll just lay, let it layer. And um, let me get my larger brush. I'm going to go to my number six because I need a little bit more coverage. And I'm actually going to use a little bit of brown and just transition it from bright orange yellow to brown black. So I'm going to let it be black towards the center, but I want it to be bright orange near the top and it's going to take some time to dry. So um, while this is drying, I'm going to paint all the little light grasses that are part of this, the garden behind it. So I'm going to use a little bit of light green and I'm just going to paint little these little tufts. And this was just part of my my scene from before. So it's just a soft, I'm using a soft green and white and I'm just going to fill in this area with these grasses that were part of the part of the Lake George scene that I took. It might not be the most ideal um, element to put back here because you can't really tell what it is, but it provides a light background to contrast my butterflies black. So I like that. So I don't want the dark wings against the dark trees. So this actually this little border of grasses is the perfect light border to contrast the blacks. And for myself personally, I know they were beautiful grasses. So I'm just going to go with what I saw. And they're far in the distance, and they were those big, fluffy mounds of grasses that just are, you know, like the size of a small child. They're just huge. But if you keep it soft and, and simple, I'm just getting a little suggestion of grasses. So I still want it to look like it's far away from my, my flower. So I'm trying to keep it very soft, very basic. I don't want it to look like it's right up here in front. And there was also some sort of um, white fluffy flowers and I'm, I'm going to put them in here just to break up the grasses because they're kind of I don't like that whole big straight line thing so I'm going to add some little pom-poms 
which are also very soft and fuzzy. I'm going to keep them nice and light. You see, this is, and this is part of my memory. You know, the, that garden scene. I was walking with my daughter. We were down at the lake with my family. And when, when my daughter and I went walking together, we just had so much fun just taking pictures of these cone flowers with the, I mean, with the, um, the bees all over them. And maybe I'll just put a couple of little distant cone flowers back here. Just to suggest that there's cone flowers in the distance. Notice I balanced it, pink up here and then the pink down here. So I'm going to add a little bit more shadow to my cone flowers, a little more streaks here. Alright, let's see if this top one's dry. So when, as soon as this dries, I can get another another layer of orange and yellow in here. I just want to get this the highlight on this cone flower a little bit bright before I start in with all the little spikes. And the more I paint, it's starting to come. It's starting to pull the paint off. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let that rest for a little bit, and I'll just start working on my butterfly. Okay, so a second layer to the butterfly. Really quickly, we're gonna do an orange. The second layer is going to be much more vivid since we already have our first layer down. This should be enough to cover the brown and give us a beautiful orange-yellow transition. So I'm going to load it up with orange again, orange, yellow, and white. I want it to be very yellowy near the bottom and then a little bit deeper orange near the top. So I'm going to get a little more yellow and white near the bottom. I still want it to look orangey, but I want it to be a bright orange. And then we'll get some nice darks near the top. See, I hope that when you paint this, you're going to have all these different thoughts and questions going through your head. And this is why I like to share with you like what's going through my head so that you can hopefully know where you're going and what you want to do and just paint in your own relaxed environment. With music playing and just taking your time. So I'm adding some darker orange near the top of his wings and just pulling this red orange. I mix a tiny bit of red in there. Just pulling that down and getting a couple little reds in there. Getting this orange is gonna be key to the beauty of this painting because that's, look, it's, it's a lot of surface area and we want it to be just that beautiful, luscious orange that we love about monarchs. So I really want to get this orange nice and built up and as gorgeous as I can. It could take two or three layers, but let's just try and keep it. I'm going to try and keep it. This, these two layers. Whoops. A little too much red there. So if you get too much red, I'm going to just balance it with a little yellow and white. Turn it right to or back to orange. And I'm not trying to blend it, you know, have it be super blended. It can be brushy. I just want the transition, the light to dark. I want really, really bright oranges, and then I want some nice dark oranges too. So that's why I'm layering and layering and layering. So I get that nice, beautiful transition of bright oranges and then some deeper oranges. And it's okay if it's brush strokey, but as long as it's as beautiful as you want it in the end. And I love that orange and that transition, so I think I'm done right there. 
And let's see if I can put a little bit of yellow orange here. This flower is giving me some problems here. It's not drying. Okay. So I'm going to blow dry this so that we can get on to our last layers, which are the spikes of the flower and the black and white on our butterfly. So let's do a quick, quick blow dry. Good morning, Shireen. Good morning, Mom. I see you guys are both watching. So we are just finishing up the last little bits of our butterfly on coneflower at Lake George. So I'm combining some a couple different references that I took from vacation and also from Giselle's recent visit to a butterfly um, exhibit. And I'm going to bring up my butterfly and let's get painting some really pretty black. So I'm going to use water and I'm going to thin down my black. I'm going to jump right into all these beautiful black lines on the butterfly. So I'm going to try and do this kind of quick. So we're going to just do the little head, body, and And then from the shoulders, we're going to do And you can always make little adjustments to yours as you go. Okay, let's see. We go from here to here. When you're using a scripty brush like this one, it's kind of, if you practice doing some little flowy lines, you'll probably get a little bit better um, single flow. It's kind of easy to do it, like if you do it in one single stroke, but it can also take a little bit of practice. So don't be hard on yourself if you don't get it done right away. So I'm holding my, I'm actually holding my own arm like this to brace it. And hang, so I can hang above my painting and I can just make these nice big strokes. It's quite a lot of black on the tip of the wing. And we can make them, I guess, any size we want. We're going to do like this. And. There's quite a lot of black on this guy, but that's okay. They all are different. You want to work on symmetry because butterflies are pretty symmetrical. So the black and the water, it's very important to thin your black with water to do these techniques so that you can really use it almost like a, like a, like a little scripty tool. And I kind of, um, this is not exactly like the butterfly that's in front of me, but I'm just doing a close, you know, just, just as close as I can, but letting my lines just be as fluid as I can because it's more important that you just enjoy the process than it being perfect. 
If you need to make something a little thicker, just make it a little thicker. Don't worry about it being exactly like the butterfly. If you're really into, you know, tight illustration, you can always make it tighter. But if you're just painting for fun, then just keep it fun. And don't get don't get crazy on things being perfect. It's the colors, it's the brush strokes, it's all the it's the memories that you're capturing. That's what's important, not not everything being exactly perfect. course the more you paint butterflies the more you're gonna you're gonna learn about their patterns and you might be more particular if you're a butterfly person you might get really crazy detailed and that's fun for you but if you're not you just enjoy painting once in a while then just make it a little bit messier make it a little bit crazier and just have fun with it Okay, so there's lots of black on there, which I love. I just think it looks very dramatic and it also brings it to the foreground. And I'm gonna let that dry a little bit and I need to paint all the little spikes. So the spikes on the coneflower are tricky because we don't, I, like I said, I don't wanna make every single spike, but they are kind of a bright yellowy orange. So I'm gonna make a bright yellowy orange mixture. And I need white on here to really make it stand out and they're going to be longer near the top I want to try and make each one nice and thick so I'm going to load up my brush often so along the top here they're going to be a little bit closer together and then as they get down here they're going to start spacing out so I'm just going to put little little dots and I'm going to make tiny little brush strokes that are going to be as blobby as I can make them. <clears throat> I'm making them a little blobby so that they, the paint um, is really thick and it's, it's a little hard on this um, but there's lots of spikes around the top edge and then they get they, they start to fat space out down here so I'm going to go a little bit more spaced. And there's all different ways that you can interpret this coneflower top. If you might find a, a, a more efficient way of doing it, you might find a, a way that's prettier to you. So just play and see what works for you. I'm going to do a slight transition from or from darks to oranges, and get some. I want to get some bright oranges, which in these paints it's a little hard to build up the oranges sometimes because the orange is very translucent. But it just might take a little bit more layering. If you have a higher quality paint, sometimes the orange might be a little bit more thick. So I'm gonna just add some little dark orange edges to that so I can play up any pretty transition. I want those beautiful dark oranges and the yellows to be part of this cone flower. It doesn't matter to me that they're each spike is painted exactly like the photo. It's just creating interest through color and transition or texture so I'm doing a little bit of all that I'm doing a little bit of color a little bit of transition a little bit of texture and now to get so I have this 
I love the dark oranges that I put along the tips here. I let it go a little lighter down here because I needed to get that contrast against the black. But now I need some little darkness in here to transition. So I'm going to go back to my black and I'm going to add some black in between these dots. So I'll just go back to the black and I'm going to start dotting in between And there's, you can see in between the little spikes, the little shadows. So I'm just putting little tiny dots up near the top, letting the oranges be contrasting that black. Okay, so that's pretty close. That's all I really want to have on, on there. And I, maybe I'll just come in here and add a little bit of black. Some of these little spaces, again, just getting those little tiny shadows. And I'm going to add my antenna. Let me bring up my butterfly because i got to do my patterns on the butterfly. The little, now that the black is dried, first I'm going to add my little antenna. go and let's get that smoothed out now we're going to add our little bit of our little patterns that we have on the butterfly like our there's kind of a grayish white pattern on the, on the tail here and there's lots of white dots so let's get a nice clean brush and add all our little white patterns which is going to be very satisfying oh you know before we do the the white patterns, there's actually some small orange dots in here. So I got to do some light orange. And within this black, there are some little light orange dots. Okay, so there's some light orange. Now everything else is white. So I'm going to have a nice clean brush and the final little details, I'm going to bring it up close and we're going to do all these little white details. So there's little white dots on the wings. And they kind of go like this along the wing. kind of dot along here. These little dots are so much fun because they really make the monarch just look so much more realistic. It's got a little pattern, it's got a little white on its face. They actually have quite a few white dots on their, their face, but the face of my monarch is a little wet, so I'm going to do that in a minute. So get those white blob, get those white dots nice and blobby, so that they are nice and bright. And just do some along here. Let's get a space. Okay, so that is the final painting, and I'm going to just do the last minute touch-ups. I'm going to look at my painting and think like, okay, what do I need to add or touch up? And I kind of want to fix this wing and make it a little bit more out. 
like this, kind of covering up a little bit more of my flower. And let's see, what else do I want? Maybe I'll add a little bit more black to here. There we go. And I like the black on my cone flower, so I'm just gonna make sure that that's balanced and just give a couple more touches. And I think the only thing I, uh, I want to do is maybe just add a little bit more depth to my grasses. Be now that the butterfly is totally in, and so is the coneflower, it's kind of flat back here. So I'm going to add a little tiny bit of depth to my green by adding just a little bit more greenery right along the edge here. You want to make sure your orange little dots here are dry so you don't smear. I'm just adding a tiny bit of contrast or a little bit of depth right along the base of my grasses, just giving it a little bit more depth. Oops, and I just got a water droplet. Okay. Which brought some orange into my sky here. There we go. Okay, so there's our beautiful butterfly. I wish this orange was a little bit brighter, but <clears throat> it may just need to dry quite a bit and then add a little bit of lighter. So I might, I might touch this up a little bit later. Um, and, and this is a painting that <clears throat> you can always, um, like I said, you can always simplify it by keeping a dark, just doing a dark background and maybe eliminating the whole um, mountain range back there. Um, I'm going to, let's see, I think I still want to brighten up some of the oranges in the butterfly because now that it's dry, it's not quite as vibrant as I would like it. So I'm going to just add a couple little streaks of orange. To the wing here. Orange can need, can sometimes require a lot of layering. So. Um, this is why I, I didn't want to do another whole layer and make the painting take a lot longer. But you can certainly, like I'm just adding a few little bright streaks back in. You can always brighten up that orange, you know, just by throwing in a few brush strokes here and there and really brightening up the, spa the, the oranges here. And it's not that I'm, I, I want to change the color so much as I want to make the paint look a little bit more vibrant. And I lost some vibrancy. This one I didn't even get all the way to the black, so I'm going to just get a little bit more right up in here. Okay, so this, ma this mini had a lot of components. Which made it, uh, which can definitely make it a little more challenging. But um, I hope that you have fun in your attempt, that you learn a lot, and that you just bring to your painting whatever you can. Don't try to make it exactly, you know, don't worry about if it looks exactly like mine or even close. Just do what you can do and Take some of the tips to add some extra beauty to your painting, whether it be through contrast or through texture. I'm changing up the composition if you want to. Um, simplifying it if you want to. If you have a vision of a very So sometimes our little hour morning sessions go a little over because we have um, planning and sketching in the beginning and um, see that got a little on the front is that a little blob but this painting for me was also more than just painting the butterfly I really wanted to capture a little bit more from my um, 
my garden photos from Lake George. So I went a little bit more into capturing just this little bit of landscape, which for me places this into my vacation photos. And that's a very nice way to personalize something. So maybe you're gonna paint something and you don't know what to put in the background. Well, if you remember a place where you were really happy and enjoying yourself, like a vacation photo, and you have something that you can pull from that background, that's a great way to just add a little bit of nature, but use your own reference. And now you've, you've captured a little bit of your vacation in your painting without painting it exactly like your photo, which can might maybe not be ideal. All right, well, thanks so much for joining me, everybody who watched with me this morning and painted or not painted. Um, hope you have a great rest of your Monday. And if you do try out any version of this painting or sketches, please share them on our Facebook page. Um, you can put them onto the main page and let everybody see what we did. Um, we also have a free Facebook group. If you're part of that, you can put it into the free Facebook group or just jump in and join the free Facebook group and see what everybody else is posting. Um, you'll learn that everybody is on a different skill level and that as the more you paint, of course, like with anything, the better you get, the more confident you become. And it's just something that you can enjoy really at any stage. All right, thanks so much for joining me and I will see everyone later. Bye-bye.